Do you like Nicole Kidman? Do you know who she is? I don't know who she is. Is she kind of old? Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another Dun Dun Mukbang! Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, this is a mukbang that I wanted to film months ago. Months ago. So I got on my little lappy tappy and I started tick tack and click quacking away and I ordered some shit. And some of them, this one took like a freaking month to get here. The Earth took like three weeks to get here. <laughs> Earth is slow, bitch. Yeah. Earth is slow. It has been an absolute sh show. And so today I am finally doing a Korean 7-Eleven inspired. Here we've got this mac and tomato spaghetti instant in a cup. I don't even know if Italians do this. Definitely they definitely don't. don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where we thought it was our business to do it, but I'm really <laughs> excited to try it. And then we also have the mac and wow. cheese version of the spaghetti. We have a milk tea canned drink. We have a banana uyu. We have these UFO flying saucer desserts. We've got some peach booty, booty gains, <laughs> peach gummies. Ooh, honey, the way oh. you handle that peach. Sorry. It's kind of you know small though. In uh, Chinese, pigu. Pigu? How did you know that? Ew, Utah. why do you know that? <laughs> why, why did you teach Remember your butt? That. Big pigu. Big pigu is what you said? I did not say that. Aw, you're so sweet. We have globe gummies. They're so strange. The way that they're so soft. <laughs> Look, if I use this, it bounces. Really? I don't know if you call <laughs> honey. Honey, honey, I went so hard. And then on this side, I have something interesting. I have boba milk tea mochi and then boba milk tea cake. Yeah. And then we got some Japanese drinks. That and then we I'm have excited about. some bagged drinks. Didn't we have try this in Korea? I don't know. Korea was a blur. Okay. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. Whoa! Freaking blue. Do not put lit in microwave. The only thing we put in there is powder soup. Fill it with water, microwave away for five minutes. I'm ready. Me too. <laughs> Very liquidy. You don't take out the water. Apparently you just throw in them sauces. I'm gonna do mac and cheese spaghetti powdered cheese soup. <laughs> He's putting in the tomato sauce. Hey, this looks nothing like the picture on the cup. Oh, that's the picture. Completely. And this is what you're getting. Yay. Yay. The picture looks like spaghetti, and I got cheese ramen. <laughs> it's about the quality. So let's say you go on a first date. The girl shows up. She looks nothing like the picture. What do you do? Does she look better than the picture? Or worse? Worse than, than the picture. I mean, like, is it like huge difference? Like a big difference. Like, like when you difference. when you see Stephanie on Instagram versus seeing her in <sighs> real life. I'm gonna bite it. It's like a paper outside. Oh my god, did you guys know this? Mm -hmm. Little beads in there. It's literally paper. It's Very actually not sweet. So many things that I want to try. I'm so excited about this. He's had this. Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready for the biggest scam? <laughs> and there is nothing! <laughs> I thought it was an earth gummy because it would be an earth gummy. Uh -huh. No, it's, it's like a blue gummy. This is like if you try to put something on the outside to cover up your inside. But at the end of the day, we still see your inside. Oh my god, what? I don't like this texture. How do you eat it? Do you just suck it into just your mouth? Just bite it and have it. It was so bouncy. There will be a juice inside. It's be so bouncy, inside? it's so bouncy. Oh my god, I don't like this. Mm. Oh my god, there's something in there. Mm -hmm. It's like jam. Does this not remind you of eyeball? Mm. Same size and everything. Wow, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. It's pretty good. It's so bouncy. Wait, which flavor do you guys like? What is that? Melon. I think what it says is there's a ball here mm -hmm. on top. You push this down to push the ball down. So the ball will drop. Are you guys ready? It's like New Year's Eve. So romantic. <laughs> Then I show them what you're doing. Push it harder. Push it harder. Come on, you can do this. Hey, I see what you're doing. You can do this. Did you, push. Did you, no. <laughs> <laughs> you pop this out. You pop Dude, this out. Dude, come on, man. Come on. And you just push it down. Wow. Are you really trying to one hand it? <laughs> I think you need to put it on a surface and just hammer it down. You guys ready? No, that's not gonna work. Oh. Was I really the first oh. one? Oh! Got him. Got him. You're still opening yours? Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, honey, honey. Mm. Mm. You're good. I'm using my iPhone. Are you insane? <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna try this mac and cheese, and then yes. I'm gonna get into. Oh, it looks like real mac and cheese now. Oh, this looks good. I wanted to try this in Korea, That's but so I couldn't cool. do it the proper way. I believe it was because we didn't have a microwave in the place that we were staying at. That just looks like a robin. <laughs> Not good? 
It's like bootleg, but Vita instant mac and cheese. Ah, try this. Mm -mm. It's weird. Is that one better? Not really. Bruh. It's very half assed. Tastes like, like school lunch spaghetti. Though. Yeah. Oh my god, it tastes like school lunch spaghetti. Okay, There's a way try to it. describe it. I never had this school lunch. <laughs> Hey, What's bro. so funny? When Later. did you come? When I was six. Oh, you came early. So this is what yeah. school kids are eating. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Spaghetti. Maybe worse. Yeah. You know what's weird? Oh. I really liked school lunch. My mom didn't I like. I love school pizza. My mom. <laughs> I love school lunch. Ew! You know what he does to school pizza? He puts mayonnaise on it. I don't know why. He thought that Americans eat mayonnaise with everything. I don't know who told him in China. They really. <laughs> someone heard you were coming oh, to America, yeah, troll. and they were like, "Let's troll." That's still how I eat it today. <laughs> I mean, ranch is pretty good. Have you tried that? Mayonnaise. Have you tried that? <laughs> Mm, this is really good. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, it, d it looks pretty bad, but better like, than the school lunch for sure. Inside, it looks very strange. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, right? Tastes like boba. Mm -hmm. It is boba. <laughs> it's so hard living here. They have literally developed the weirdest bromance. My fiance mm -hmm. is nonstop with his dad jokes these days because now someone laughs at them. <laughs> 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 I'm just sitting in the middle like, shut up, both of you. <laughs> What about those? Oh yeah, we have <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it tastes like soil. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, like this wow. Trials. We also have lemon. Oh wow, this one's very grounded. And lemon. Grounded. <laughs> is it good? Melon's way better. We have these drinks here. Why do you get so many weird drinks? This is about to go to the bathroom so many times tonight. <laughs> it's coffee in a bag. You cut the bag open, you stick a straw in, coffee in a bag. Oh. Today, I'm gonna tell you guys a very intense story. This story is a movie. <laughs> Been watching a lot of movies, okay? And so this movie is called Before I Go to Sleep. <laughs> Literally right before we started this book bag, Isley was trying to <laughs> sort things out and he looks at me and he goes, Hey, is it a movie today? Because he likes when I talk about movies because he thinks it's really entertaining. And I go, yeah, it's a movie. And he goes, what's it called? And I go, before I go to sleep. And he goes, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Before she goes to sleep, someone, something happens, someone tries to kill her. <laughs> I said, absolutely. <laughs> and, then, and then she woke up, it was a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that I didn't watch this, I feel like I slightly watched this and then really had to fully sit down and watch it recently. And it has Nicole Kidman in it, and so it's oh. like one of my favorite movies. She is an amazing actress. I freaking love her. Do you like Nicole Kidman? Do you know who she is? I don't know who she is. Is she kind of old? Whoa! <laughs> This all starts with a woman by the name of Christine, okay? Nicole Kidman. And she wakes up. You guys don't really get much information when you start this movie. She wakes up in a bed. I'll help you fully with Fully naked. Today. Fully naked? Fully naked. <laughs> Christine wakes up fully naked on a bed. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> this is him right now. <laughs> You don't really get much information other than that when the movie starts. And so she wakes up, and the way that she wakes up is in a tumultuous way. It's not someone who just gracefully wakes up. It's another day, mm -hmm. another hustle, another grind, rise and grind. Not that type of shit, okay? Mm -hmm. She bursts up, and she looks next to her, and there's a strange man that she's never seen before laying in the bed next to her. And so she freaks out, and she looks around. She's never seen this room before. Where is she, right? Mm -hmm. And so she sees there's a door that's open a crack, right? And it's a bathroom. And she realizes she has no clothes on, quietly gets up out of bed, goes into the bathroom, closes the door, and uh -huh. immediately she sees something that scares her. Mm -hmm. A wall full of pictures of her mm. and the man in the bed. Wedding day, on their vacations, graduation, and she's looking at it. And she's so confused and she opens the door and he's sitting on the edge of the bed. And she says, who are you? And he goes, my name is Ben. We've been married for 16 years. You have amnesia. You were in a terrible car accident. You had a very bad head trauma and you only retain information for a day. Every time you go to sleep, your brain resets and we start all over again. But what? What, what movie is this? Horror? Thriller? Psychological thriller. Oh, okay. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. It's like the only movie genre that I love. Psychological mm. thriller, huh? Mm -hmm. I don't know why. This is getting better and better. This too. Yeah, this <laughs> too. You know what banana oil? It's good for you. Mm -hmm. It's not good for me. It's, it's good banana. For... And milk. It's a fruit and it's a yes. dairy product. <laughs> 
<laughs> he says, you know, every day you're back in your early 20s when you had that accident and we've been married for like 16 years. So she's kind of hesitant, but she believes him. He walks her through the house. He starts getting ready for work. He puts on a suit. Mm -hmm. There's giant whiteboards in the kitchen and he says, if you have a headache, this is where the medicine is. This is where other medicines are. These are numbers for calling me. These mm -hmm. are the local hospitals, blah, 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 blah. She's looking at it. And so it says, pack your bags on the whiteboard. And she says, what am I packing my bags for? And Ben goes, well, it's our anniversary and I wanted to take you somewhere nice. Mm -hmm. So pack your bags, we'll go to a nice hotel. Mm -hmm. I think you'll really like it. He leaves for work, he drives off, and suddenly the phone rings. And she goes, hello? And someone says, Hi, Christine. This is Dr. Nash. I know that means nothing to you. I know you won't remember anything because you just woke up. I want you to walk to your wardrobe and inside of your closet, on the bottom right corner, you have a shoebox. Open up the shoebox. There's a camera. Now watch everything inside of that camera and call me later. Oh my god. And so she hangs up the phone, mm -hmm. she rushes into her closet, mm -hmm. finds a shoebox with a camera, and she starts playing every video clip. It's like a vlog. And the first frame is of her mm -hmm. in that bathroom saying, Hi, my name is Christine. I'm an amnesiac. By the next morning, I'll forget everything. I'll forget that I am in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. I'll wake up thinking I have my whole life ahead of me, when in reality, I'm about halfway done. Damn. And then she said, Oh, sh he's coming, he's coming. And then... It's a flashback to two weeks prior. So that's current day, but we're gonna go two weeks prior. Two weeks ago, you'll flash back to her sitting in the car on the passenger side with a different man that looks nothing like Ben, her husband, right? Mm -hmm. And they're driving. The man will start saying things like, hi, I'm Dr. Nash. I know it's kind of crazy. I normally don't do visits like this where I pick up a patient from their home and take them to my office and then drop them off. And your husband doesn't even know that you're seeing me, right? Mm -hmm. And then she's like, no, he doesn't know. He's like, okay, very interesting. I'm just surprised to that. I saw you at the park. You know, a lot of people were writing about you in the medical field. She's like, a lot of people at the park. And he's like, yeah, you were sitting there at this little mountainside, like hillside park. Mm -hmm. And I remembered seeing your pictures in the papers and in a lot of medical studies. And I introduced myself and that's how we got started on this. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It must have been a really bad accident if, you know, the newspapers were writing about it. Yeah. And he goes, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. And she goes, I, I mean, was it on the highway or something? And he looks at her and goes, Christine, what are you talking about? And she says, I was in a car accident. That's that's why I have head trauma and that's why I'm an amnesiac. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, you were left for dead. You were beaten. Someone had repeatedly hit you on the head, blunt force trauma. You were left in a parking lot completely naked and you almost died. What? And she says, what? No, that's insane. That's, I don't believe you. I mean, Ben told me this morning that I was in a car accident and I injured my head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I don't know why he told you that. And he pulls out newspaper clippings uh -huh. and he pulls out all these news reports. A woman was left naked in a parking lot near the airport and she almost died. And so then she's like, what? Why would Ben lie to me? Why would he lie to me then? And he says, I don't know. Maybe it's just easier for him every morning to explain that you were in a car accident than explain that you were left for dead. And she goes, yeah. well, do, did they catch the person who tried this, who did this to me? No, they didn't catch the person. Why? What's going on? Christine, we don't know. You're the only one who knows this. You're the only one who knows who attacked you. Nobody else knows. The police couldn't find anyone. And so they're not in jail. And so he gives her a box and she says, what's this? She opens it up. It's the camera, the camera that she was recording on mm. that she found in the shoe box. And he says, so a lot of, you know, my patients, they do a video diary. It's a visual diary, Blog -a, a video diary. And it's nice to be able to see your face saying these words. So you really believe it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know. It's up to you. I know that Ben doesn't even know that you're here. Why doesn't he know? And she says, you know, he's always told me that I've been through a lot of therapy. I've been to a lot of doctors and mm -hmm. it only makes me more stressed out at the end because mm -hmm. I I never get my memory back and I always forget the next day and every day I have to be explained to that you know I'm seeing a therapist because of blah 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 right mm -hmm. and she said so I stopped seeing people for a really long time mm -hmm. and he says well Maybe it's a good idea to not let Ben know that you have a visual diary because subconsciously you might think that in the morning you'll forget mm -hmm. and so you won't be as free and open. Mm 
because you think Ben might hear your conscious, deepest, darkest thoughts, you know? Mm. And this is for you to remember things. And Mm -hmm. so she said, okay. And he said, and I will call you every single morning to let you know where that video camera is. So just put it, I don't know, in your closet in a shoebox or something, okay? Mm -hmm. And she says, okay. And so then he drops her off. Mm -hmm. And so she comes home, the husband's making dinner, and she goes to the bathroom and she says, My name is Christine, and I'm an amnesiac. I wake up every morning thinking that I am in my early 20s, and I have my whole life ahead of me, Mm -hmm. but I've actually lived half of it. But I always forget at night when I go to sleep. Oh, shit, he's coming. coming. He's coming. And she turns it off. So it's not even, like, something that that crazy. Mm -hmm. Does she feel like it was something really bad? No. Oh, Oh, in the beginning, yeah, when she watches the tape. She was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And so then the next day, right? And it's kind of crazy the way that the movie sets it up is you don't really know what days are what days. Mm. And I think that's very interesting because it's someone who forgets every time they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So you just feel like very claustrophobic. You just feel like you just don't understand. Like it just feels very hectic. Mm -hmm. And so then the next time she gets into the car with Dr. Nash and Mm -hmm. he's driving and he says, I'm going to take you somewhere and it's going to be very traumatic. And she says, where are you taking me? And he says, I'm going to take you to the place that you were found in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. And she says, why? And he goes, it's actually very, very low percentage of victims will remember their, have their memories come back if they go to the place of the trauma. Mm-hmm. And then she goes, then why are you taking me? And he goes, to build trust. And so they go there and on the way in the car, she keeps saying things like, I mean, when you think about it, it's kind of crazy. Ben could literally say anything and i would believe it Mm -hmm. because i wake up next to him Mm -hmm. and whatever he says i don't know i don't remember anything and so then he says yeah and so they drive Mm -hmm. they get to the little parking lot and it's like a very weird almost like an abandoned warehouse parking lot Mm -hmm. and so they walk over and there's these two shipping containers Mm -hmm. and they point to a ground in the middle of it Mm -hmm. and the parking lot attendant says yeah i found you here you were covered in plastic Hmm. And she said, plastic? Like, Mm -hmm. what do you mean? You know, and they said like a plastic tarp. So whoever did this to her really thought she was dead, really thought she was going to die. And he was like, yeah, completely naked, found you here. I could like blood everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And immediately she hears an airplane so close go by. They get into the car and she says, what was I doing near the airport? And Dr. Nash says, I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything about you since before your attack. I don't really know you, Christine, as a person, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanted to take this case pro bono because I really wanted to help and see what I can do. Mm -hmm. And so she said, but why would I be near the airport? Was I traveling somewhere? Do I travel for work? Mm -hmm. And he said, says i don't know i mean there's a lot of hotels here Mm -hmm. near the airport and she Mm -hmm. goes hotels what would i be doing in a hotel i live here why would i need to book a hotel room and he says for lots of reasons and she's like what do you mean lots of reasons and dr nash finally opens up and says you know police reports did mention that you had sexual intercourse prior to your death and she said i was assaulted who did this they assaulted and then killed me and he said there's no indication that it was against your will and so she said so i wanted it and he's like that's not what i'm saying but the police say there's no indication that it was incredibly forceful and so she's like there's no way i would cheat on my husband i'm married i've I've been married for so long i i'm not the type of person to cheat and the doctor asks how do you know you're not that type of person and so it's just like scene by Mm, scene everything is just so creepy she just slowly starts questioning everyone in her life and then another day passes or we don't know how many days pass all we know is this happens within a two-week frame Mm -hmm. she's at the doctor's office again and he's showing her lots of pictures in the dark on a projector right Mm -hmm. just picture after picture after picture and it's non-stop a lot of the pictures aren't even pictures of her they're just pictures of beaches pictures of just random things mixed in with pictures that she would recognize and mm-hmm. she starts having a headache and she starts crying right mm-hmm. and she starts getting emotional when she sees this picture of a woman with red hair and it doesn't like it's not a picture of her with a woman of red hair but mm-hmm. just a woman with red hair and she says wait stop do i know this woman and dr nash is like i think you do um this was in your collection that you left you know it was from your house from your photo albums mm-hmm. i don't know who this woman is but it's one of your pictures so you must have known this woman mm-hmm. and so she says I feel like I know her. I feel like I know her from somewhere. And so she takes that picture home and she starts pacing. And then her husband comes home and they're eating dinner and she says, Do I have any friends? Uh Ben looks at her and goes, 
I mean, you you had a lot of friends, but did I have a friend with red hair? I'm, I'm not too sure, honey. I don't know why that matters right now. What, why don't I have any friends? And yeah. so she goes, no, I must have had a friend with red hair. I think her name was Claire. Oh my God, so that's she, scary. She yeah, and he goes, Claire? Oh yeah, you did have a friend named Claire. I think you knew her from college. I think you knew her from college. I remember oh. Claire. Claire was a weird one. Uh, I, I don't really remember, but I, I think I know Claire. And she said, you're lying. Tell me the truth. You know Claire. And he says, Claire was a good friend of yours. Yeah, yeah, Claire. I know Claire. And she says, you're lying. You're not telling me the truth. He says, well, what do you want from me, Christine? Do you want me to tell you the truth? Okay, I will tell you the truth. Claire was your best friend. And she called every single day. And then one day, she got sick of the fact that you didn't remember her after every time she hung up the phone she stopped calling and she moved away and she never called you back is that what you want to hear why does this matter does it even matter to you mm -hmm. it's only gonna hurt you and he starts freaking out and so she gets upset and she goes i want to know these things it's not my fault sometimes i get tired sometimes you know most of the time i want to explain these to you but sometimes i'm just tired too christine i'm just tired i don't want to explain everything all the time why does it matter and she's like it matters to me and so she sees some pictures of her and Claire he shows her and just kind of walks her through a memory lane of Claire and her friendship right and he's like this hurt you a lot you were really sad and so I don't want to talk about it with you it's only gonna hurt you over and over and over again mm -hmm. and so she says okay and so she takes the pictures and she goes into the bathroom and you know how all of their pictures are taped up mm -hmm. so she taped these pictures of her and Claire on the toilet behind her and so she sat on the toilet turned on her camera and said don't trust Ben, he keeps secrets from you. He wouldn't tell you who Claire was. And you could see the pictures behind her, right? Mm -hmm. And then she clicks off the camera. Emotional blogging is going to cause trouble. Uh -huh. yeah. And so then she gets really upset. The next day, she wakes up. Dr. Nash calls her, tells her to go check her video camera. Mm -hmm. She checks it, and she's watching the clip of saying, Don't trust Pet. Don't trust Ben. Yeah. He's hiding Claire from you. And he's hiding Claire from you? Yeah. Oh. And she sees the pictures of Claire on the toilet. Mm -hmm. And so she goes to the bathroom and they're not there anymore. He had what taken the pictures heck? down he from did? the toilet. And so she's like, that bastard. So and does so she, she think that he's cheating? I don't know. Okay. And so she gets really freaking upset, oh right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden that day, she has these flashbacks. She has these memories mm -hmm. of Claire. Mm -hmm. And she remembers this one memory where she's so young and she's in a bathroom and she's throwing up. And Claire walks in and goes, Christine, are you okay? Mm -hmm. And she looks back and goes, I think I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then she suddenly remembers, I feel like I have a son. Do I have a son somewhere? What? And so she calls Ben mm -hmm. while he's at work and says, are you hiding my kid from me? Do we have a kid together? Mm -hmm. And so he rushes home and it's raining and she's screaming. It's a whole ass scene. Listen, if I was their neighbor, I'd walk out and video record this or at least <laughs> eavesdrop because it was a whole fucking mm -hmm. hugging, punching in the rain scene, right? Mm -hmm. And they get inside and he shows showing her pictures of her and her son together, right? Uh -huh. Just so many pictures. So around the time after your accident, he got meningitis and he died. He was eight years old. I don't know what to explain. Mm -hmm. I don't want to relive this every single day of my mm -hmm. life. I want to put it behind me. And so I didn't want to tell you what would it do. It would hurt me. It would hurt you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do this. And so she's looking at the pictures and she's saying things like, was that was I a good mom? And he was like, yeah, before you got sick, before everything happened, you were a really good mom. You were mm -hmm. the best mom. And he gets really upset. And she says, listen, I know that this hurts you, but if you love me, don't ever hide my son from me. And then she goes, to the bathroom and she turns on her vlogging camera and she's crying and she says ben this is this grief the sadness of their son dying is old for him mm -hmm. but this is new for her and it's gonna yeah. be new tomorrow and the next day and the next day and she will have fresh pain and grief every waking day of her life she starts having dreams about her son so the first dream she had was her in a hotel in a hallway uh -huh. it's a long hallway and she's at the end of that hotel room she's in there and she's getting attacked she's trying to crawl away when someone hits her on the back of the head and mm -hmm. blood splatters everywhere but she doesn't see the attacker and she wakes up and then she has another dream the next night and it's the long hallway and she's still getting attacked when all of a sudden she opens the door and her son's sitting there with the drawing mm -hmm. And she grabs it, and it's a drawing of a man. But when a kid does it, it's just a stick figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it says, Mike. 
Mike? Do I know a Mike? And so she sees the doctor the next day, right? And she says, I've been having these really crazy nightmares about that hotel. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what's going on. I found out I had a son and he he said, yeah, I knew you had a son. I didn't want to tell you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if Ben told you or what is going on at home, but I just felt like that'd be too much trauma. Mm -hmm. And so she's kind of leaning on him for comfort. And it seems like they kind of like each other. Uh And he puts his arm around her. And she's like, I feel like I only feel comfortable with you. And then he looks at her and she looks at him. And then she looks at his name tag, his hospital badge. Says Mike? It says Dr. Mike Nash. OMG. So she looks at him and she rushes out the car and she starts running. And he goes into the trunk and he goes, Christine. And he pulls out a syringe and he chases after her. What the heck? What the? Why? And she wakes up in her house on her couch. She gets a phone call. She picks up the phone call and yeah. it says, this is Dr. Nash, Christine, don't hang up the phone. And it hadn't been the next day yet. So she's so just she hanging out. She yeah. goes, what did you do to me? Were you the one that attacked me? What's your plan? I'm going to tell Ben everything. Uh-huh. And he says, I don't think you should. I don't think you should trust Ben. Trust me. I'll explain it tomorrow. I administered a light sedative. A lot of people, a lot of patients that have amnesia, their imagination and their brain wants to fill in the gaps. Mm. And sometimes they get it wrong. And that's okay. what happened to you. Dang. I want to watch and so, this <laughs> I know. So she hangs up and Ben comes home. You know, that day everything presumes as normal. She has a video clip of her and her son when she was young. The dad, obviously Ben, is recording it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she says, what do you think about first thing when you wake up? And the little Adam, his name is Adam. Adam mm-hmm. goes, what's for breakfast? And oh, then she like says, us. Yeah. <laughs> and then she says, is that what you think? And he says, what do you think? And then she said something about imagination. It's like a cute little moment. And she just keeps rewatching it and crying. And she meets Dr. Nash the next day. And he sits down and he says, listen, it's normal for patients when they feel vulnerable to, you know, have feelings towards their doctors. Mm-hmm. Now, what's not normal is for the doctors to feel the same feelings. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I have to have you transferred to a different doctor that was so unprofessional of me that I let myself feel those things. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, but I just need you to know a couple things. I called that hospital that was taking care of you after your accident. They said that, you know, before you left, you never really left like a contact number. Claire has been calling there a lot and she's been wanting to contact you. So Uh I I feel like it'll be good for you and your growth Uh if you call Claire and maybe catch up with an old friend. Uh It might help in your recovery. She says, okay. And he goes, and Ben, um, I looked into it. I, I just felt like it was strange that there wasn't a contact number. But Ben divorced you four years ago. And I don't know if that was a money thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know if he loves you. So she's like, why would he divorce me? Is he like, what did he do? You know? Mm-hmm. And so she gets upset and she shows up at his workplace. Okay. And she starts screaming at him like, are we divorced? How can I ever trust you? How can I ever trust anything that comes out of your mouth? You say that you love me. You said you were, we were married for 14 years, but uh-huh. you divorced me four years ago. So we were only married for 10 years. And he says, listen, Christine, I lost you. And then I lost Adam. And I was a mess. I literally didn't think after I lost Adam, I just couldn't. And my heart was so shattered. And I just, I had to go. I had to leave. I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go every day pretending to be happy every single day. It was just too much. I just couldn't do it. And so she said, Oh, and she's like, I guess I understand that, right? Mm -hmm. And he gives her a hug and he's like, Christine, I would never leave you. I'm sorry that I left you four years ago. Mm -hmm. But I came back and I would never do it again. And then the next day, she has a phone. She calls Claire, the number that Dr. Nash gave her. Mm -hmm. And Claire picks up and goes, oh my God, Christine, I've been waiting for this day. I was always hoping that one day you'd call me and we'd go back to normal. Mm -hmm. And so they arranged to meet at a park. So Mm -hmm. they meet at that park together and they hug and she's the one with the red hair. Mm -hmm. And they start talking and it's almost like old times again feels like. They start talking about what happened. Christine says, I can't, I thought you moved away. That's what Ben told me. And she goes... I didn't move away. And she goes, then why would Ben lie about that? Why would Ben say that? And she goes, Christine, when you got sick, I was helping a lot with your son. I was helping with Adam Mm -hmm. and I was helping with Ben. One day it led to something else and we had an affair. And I felt so bad. I felt so shit. 
I felt like the worst friend. I love you more than anything, and so it was the biggest mistake of my life. And so I, I told Ben I'm moving away, and I, I never contacted him ever again. And so she said, okay. She gives her a letter, and she says, but before Ben divorced you, he never thought he'd come back. So he wanted me to give you this letter if you ever recovered. Claire kept saying things like, you never really appreciated Ben. You're so lucky to have Ben, and that just made her feel very strange. Oh. She grabs the letter and she starts walking home. This is at this point you realize that Claire, her best friend had an affair with her husband during her recovery her husband tried to divorce her four years ago and then got back together with her and her son died she's reading this letter as she's walking home and inside this letter ben is writing very beautiful words and ben is writing i i gave this i mailed this to claire i told her that if you are ever well to give this letter to you mm -hmm. and I have to divorce you, not because I don't love you and not because I can't handle this anymore, mm -hmm. but it's because it was hard. It was so hard. Every time that I brought Adam in to see you to the hospital, you thought that someone kidnapped him or the next day you wouldn't remember him. And so I stopped bringing him. He passed away and then I kept going. And every time I came, you were, you were so distraught because you were so confused. And so I stopped going. I stopped mm -hmm. going for a couple days and I called the nurses mm -hmm. and I said, you know, how's Christine doing? And they said, she seems happy. And he said, does she remember me? Does she remember Adam? No, mm -hmm. she hasn't asked about you guys. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like maybe you were happier without knowing. Maybe you were happier just being happy with the nurses. That's sad. And so I love you more than anything. Mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that all of us are happy and sometimes you're happier without me. Mm -hmm. And so she's reading this and she's walking home and she gets home and she picks up the camera and she says, Ben, I think I know now that you love me and I think I know that I love you and I think I know that I trust you more than anything. By this time, you'll know everything that's happened and I'm just so happy that like we've gotten to this place. And she cuts the camera. The next scene that you see is of her sitting on the dining table mm -hmm. and Ben is watching that clip with her and she's so happy and she's looking at him right mm -hmm. and then he looks at her and goes what do you mean I'll, by now i'll know everything and she says so two weeks ago i started seeing a doctor now we're back to speed okay so we're present day <sighs> this was the night before this is the last night oh my God. before the pack your bags and so then she says you know i for two weeks now i've been seeing a doctor mm -hmm. who's been trying to help me remember and he stands up mm -hmm. and he slaps her across the <gasps> face and she doesn't understand what's going on and she's shaken and she's so weirded out and so she grabs her phone and she calls Dr. Nash and says, Dr. Nash, I told him and he's so mad at me. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And he's like, okay, just wait. Let me see if I can do something. Let me see if I can head over there. Are you sure? He's like that. And she's like, I don't know. He walked away. Maybe he was just angry in that moment. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh -huh. And so then she hangs up the phone and she's like walking around and all of a sudden she gets a call. And so she picks up the phone and she says, hello. And it's Claire. Uh -huh. And Claire goes, Christine, where are you? And she goes, me right now? I'm at home. Why? And she goes, you need to leave the house. And she goes, why? And she goes, describe to me. Describe to me what Ben looks like. Does, does Ben have a scar on his face? No. Why? Christine, I talked to Ben earlier today and he says he hasn't seen you in years. Oh. I don't know who you're living with, but you need to get out of the house. Do you know your address? I don't know my address. You need to get out of the house. You need to get out of the house. And she hangs up. Oh my God. I just got like chill down my spine. Holy. I didn't expect that. And so then we're flashing forward mm -hmm. to the movie beginning where she's looking at the whiteboard and it says, pack your bags. And then she gets a call. It's Dr. Nash. You need to go and check out the camera, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And she watches it. And the last clip is of her saying, you can trust Ben. And so she thinks that she can trust Ben, right? Yeah. And so she's kind of walking around the house, packing her bags. So just to get it right, after that call from Claire, she fell asleep. She fell asleep. Yeah. So, but he knows everything. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the last he, thing she recorded yeah. was, I love Ben. And I so Ben that. thinks everything is back to normal. But Ben know about the vlog? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. he thinks everything is back to normal yeah. because mm -hmm. everything's good on the vlog too. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so back to that anniversary now, right? Yeah. And so she's... So Ben's trying to kidnap her somewhere else now. Yeah. And he's outside the house, but he's pretending to be at work. And he calls the house phone. He has her cell phone and Claire keeps calling it. Mm-hmm. And he says, I'm so excited for tonight, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, be excited. And she's like, I'm excited. Oh and so she packs her bags. And the next frame you see is of them at the hotel 
in her dreams. Uh -huh. And they walk down that long hallway, and they go into the hotel room, and she says, wait a second, why are we at a hotel near the airport? And she sees planes go by. And so he goes, he sits on the bed, and he says, it's a long story. Suddenly, being in that hotel room, she remembers like yesterday. And so oh. she goes, where is Ben? <gasps> And she's looking at him. Mm -hmm. And he goes, what do you mean, where is Ben? Ben left you. Ben left you. He couldn't handle it. He said he loved you, but you had some head trauma and you don't remember things. And so he left you. And she goes, what do you mean? And he goes, all I had to do was walk into that hospital where he left you after he divorced you and say, hi, I'm Ben and I need to take her home. And guess what? They just let you go with me. What a nice smile and some fake documents can do. And she said, what? And he goes, but... Don't you think that if people actually cared about you, that wouldn't have happened? Don't you think that if Ben actually cared about you, he would have tried to find you by now? He would have found you by now? He didn't even try to reach out to you. So I'm sick of this. From now on, we're not leaving this hotel as Ben and Christine. Mm -hmm. We're leaving this hotel as Mike and Christine. And so she's really creeped out, right? Mm -hmm. And so she's like hesitant, okay? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, listen, I love you. And she's so confused and she starts having these flashbacks. And she was having an affair with Mike while she was married to Ben. Uh -huh. And they were having an affair in this hotel room. Mm -hmm. And he said, listen, let's get married. Mm -hmm. And she said, are you kidding? I'm married already. And he's like, no, we need to get married. You need to leave your husband. And she refused and he got so mad. Mm -hmm. And then she tried to leave the hotel room and he started beating her. Whoa. Because if he can't have her, no one can. Oh my Psycho. god. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, she's really scared. She and remembers everything now. She's really scared. And she, he's like, but who will take care of you? Who's going to love you? I love you more than anything, Christine. Yeah. You know that. Okay. I mean, I guess there's nothing else she can do, right? Yeah. And so he's like, come here. Just give me a hug. And so then she goes up to him. And she seems like, it seems like she's going to leave with him. And he puts his arms around her. Mm -hmm. And he goes, they've completely forgotten about you anyway. And she goes, they? They? What do you mean, they? And he looks at her and she goes, is my son alive? Oh my gosh. And he freezes. And you never fuck with a mom. And so she starts going ballistic. A huge, huge fight ensues. He tries to kill her again. Oh he tries to bash her head God. into like a wine thing. It's a huge fight. She somehow manages to get out of the hotel room, pull the fire alarm, paramedics show up, all of these police show up. He gets arrested and she has that vlog camera because he brought it to the hotel room because he wanted to delete all the footage to start fresh yeah. so she wouldn't remember anything. And so she grabs it and she goes, my name is Christine. I'm an amnesiac. And she starts all over. Uh-huh. And she wakes up in this hospital and Dr. Nash is there uh -huh. and he says, it's okay. He's been caught and he's going away for a really long time. But yeah. I think it's time for the next step of your recovery. And she goes, what do you mean? And he goes, do you remember who Ben is? And she goes, my husband. And he goes, Ben's here uh -huh. and he wants to see you. And so then Ben comes into the room and she remembers him. He has a scar on his face uh -huh. and they're talking and she's, you know, he's apologizing. He's saying, I've always loved you. I never forgot about you. And then he says, I have someone who wants to meet you. Uh -huh. The son. And then the son walks in. And he's yeah. a lot older. He's like a teenager now. Uh -huh. And he looks very scared. And she looks scared. Mm -hmm. And he goes and walks up to her and sits down and holds her hand. And she says, what's the first thing you think about when you wake up? Uh -huh. And he says, what's for breakfast? What about you? And she says, something about imagination. <laughs> Uh -huh. And he goes, you remembered. And then they hug. Is that it? And that's the end. Huh. Wow, wow, wow. How was it, the movie itself? It was really good. Huh. What, what yeah. part, was it the shocking part was the phone call? Yeah, it was so shocking. <sighs> like yeah. the whole movie, you don't know who to trust. Yeah. And I'm sure exactly. that's like how she feels. The whole yeah. movie. I thought that was a doctor. Yeah. It's so creepy, so right? So we were both wrong. Yeah, y'all yeah, oh. were both wrong. Mm -hmm. It was Ben 2.0, not the real Ben. So I was yeah. halfway there. I was at the 1.0. Are you Ben 2.0? <laughs> I'm scared now. I got really scared just now. <laughs> All right, guys. 
that's gonna be it for today's video let me wow. know in the comments what are your thoughts on this story and i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys tomorrow